All right, welcome back to the second video in our farm shooter pizza whatever game uh, we want to call this. Uh, this video is going to be, I would say, considerably more complicated than the first one, only because I'm introducing a lot of concepts, but I'm going to try to make sure I hit those and explain them to the best of my ability and highlight um just why they're they are so important just as a quick reminder where, where we last left off last left off there you go is we have a player in the scene who's able to move left and right and whenever we press our space bar i should be cloning or instantiating so creating a bunch of pizza and then we also built a script if you look over here a script that will destroy them once they get to a certain position on our z-axis. This script also was applied to our animals and we turn these things into prefabs. Uh, so our next part of our project is we're going to be starting to make it so that our animals come down randomly from the top and they're random animals. Um, I guess let's we'll jump right into it. So the first thing I want to do is create over here in my hierarchy, not my projects area, in my hierarchy, I'm going to create an empty game object. And this game object I'm going to name spawn space manager, S-P-A-W-N space M-A-N-A-G-E-R. And I like to use correct spelling here. Uh, our correct grammar, capital S, capital M. And make sure that we press return to save it. I apologize for that yawn. Uh, and where you place it isn't really relevant uh, because it's just an empty game object in the world that will just be holding a script. And it's irrelevant for us where it's placed at. And we're gonna be putting a script on it, as you can tell. One thing that we've been doing is going into our scripts folder and creating scripts. And I think we're going to continue that method for now. So I'm going to create a C sharp script. And the name of this one is, I bet you can guess, Spawn Manager. Now spelled the same way, but with no space. Spawn Manager. And I'm going to press return. There you go, Spawn Manager. Uh, it shows up in my inspector. It looks great. The name here is matching the name of the script. Uh, and I can open up that, that in Unity. Now, don't forget, we haven't put this on our spawn manager yet. So we'll do that when we get back. So I can just hit the O button here, and that should work. I already have Visual Studio open. So if you can, you know, go back and uh, make sure you have it open. So the first thing we're going to create. Up here, at, for me, line six, I'm going to press return. Uh, I can delete what was now now my line eight. I want to get rid of that comment, so I don't ever need those. Um, we are going to create a new type of variable, something we haven't played with before, uh, and something that is very, very useful. Uh, so let's start with making it public. We're going to create a public, and let's think through what, what's happening here. We're going to have a spawn manager script that is going to spawn off of that object, this empty spawn manager object, all of our different types of animals. So we need to be able to put all of the animals in here. Now I could go public game object animal one. And then I can go animal two, animal three, and I can try to create one for every one. But there's a much better way of doing that. So I'm going to create a public game object. And instead, I'm going to put square brackets, boom, like that. And I'm going to call this animal, capital P, prefabs, and put a semicolon. So this is a public game object, and these brackets called animal prefabs. So these brackets represent something called an array. And the way you spell that, I'm just going to put it over here. Array. That's how you spell it right there. Array. An array is just basically a container that holds multiple objects, or we call them elements in this example. 
because uh, it doesn't always have to be game objects. Array can hold uh, floats and ints and a bunch of things. But this just means there's a, several objects that will be held in this one little location. And this is great because if you have, like, let's say, multiple types of enemies, you could put them all into an array and uh, then they could just pull from that. And that's essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take a list, a small a list is a different word in coding, but we're basically making a series of different animals and just choosing randomly from that series. Now, with an array, all of them have to be the same kind of thing. So let's just imagine like a list is like going to the grocery store and grabbing a bunch of different things. An array is grabbing different flavors of Gatorade. They're all the same product, just different flavors. So this is array holds different flavors of the same thing. Okay, so now we have a public game object called animal prefabs. And I'm just going to save that for the second and I'm going to go back here into Unity and give it a second to compile. Great. I'm going to go into my spawn manager and I'm going to add a component and oh, spawn manager right there. So notice here there is this word called animal prefabs, which is our variable name. And you'll note that it automatically separates it. So right here is one word, lowercase a, uppercase p, but in the inspector, it knows to separate it. That's why we use the naming conventions we do. If I hit this little arrow, it says size zero, which means there's nothing, there's no items currently in here. But I want to put items in here. So this is what we'll do. This is why this little lock in the upper right hand corner of your inspector is very useful because we need to click around but we want to keep this screen up, this inspector screen open. So I'm going to click the lock right there. Go over into my assets, go into my prefab folder where you put in your, your different animals. And the easiest way to do this is to click on your first one and then hold shift down on your keyboard, the shift key, the entire time and then click on your second one and you'll see that it selects more than one thing at a time. Keep holding it down for your moose as well. You can let go at this point and then click and drag and you see it says multiple at the end of my mouse. I will drag that on top of the word animal prefabs and I'll let go and already it changes it into the size being three different elements, three different things and zero, one, two being my three different Creatures, the cow, horse, and moose. Um, I guess we'll talk about this. Uh, just sort of, a, it's sort of a joke, or it's just a, like a weird thing that people forget. Is normally we start counting the number one. So uh, hide and seek. I'm counting to ten. One, two, but arrays start at zero, the beginning element, the very first one. And I'm probably going to insert a few memes into the video uh, because. Programmers always joke about how it's weird. Uh, the people who are non-programmers don't, they start counting at one. And and programmers always count at zero, sort of a joke. Uh, so I'll put a few memes probably in the video. Anyways, the array starts at zero. So right now, this script isn't really doing anything. It's just holding these different objects right here, three objects. So let's go in the script and have it do something for us. So let's say down here in our update method, we're going to make it so that when we hit a button, which you know, you know how to do now, we are going to instantiate or create a copy or create something in the world and have it uh, move across the screen. So we're just going to pull uh, from our index numbers in just a second. So first thing I want to say is if, so this is if we press a button, so you know it's input if you're touching something like on the key physically, input, and we're going to say get key. So we're not doing the button, we're doing get key down. And I will say key code dot 
S. We're going to use the S key. I'm going to press return and open up some brackets. So don't forget to open those brackets. Remember, line 18 has no semicolon. So if I press the S key, then we're going to instantiate. Hmm, I'm getting some weird. Let me save really quick and make sure it's not pulling up all the normal scripts I would have. Line 20. This is having an error, of course. Well, oh well. Instantiate. Yeah. Open up this. And I'm going to instantiate from my animal prefabs. And you know, I'm just still I'm gonna, I'm gonna get I'm gonna open up some brackets and I have to say which one I want to get. And I'm just gonna get the zero one. I'm gonna get the one that's counting as zero, which is my cow currently. Um so remember when we instantiate, we have to say what we're instantiating, where we're instantiating, and then it's rotation. Which is sort of like saying how we instantiate it, but it's not really the same thing. So I'm gonna just keep letting keep drilling in that you have to say rotation. Okay. So instantiate animal prehab zero. I just need to put a comma so I can say where I want to do it. And I'm just gonna say um, the hmm, new vector three. So I'm just going to tell it where I want it. I want it to be in the middle of the screen. So if I want it in the middle of the screen, I want x to be zero, comma. I want my y to be zero. And I want it to be just above the top of the screen. And so the top of the screen for us was like 14 or so. So let's just go with 20. All right. So that's what we're doing. So we're taking our zero object or element in our prefabs array. We're going to create it. We're going to put it on the top of the screen. And then I need to tell its rotation. And we're just going to say take its its current rotation. So animal prefabs. It's so it's zero. Make sure you're using those square brackets because we're pulling from that array. And we're going to say it's transform dot rotation and close that with a parentheses and a semicolon so here's what I'll do I'll go ahead and zoom in for you really quick in case you had trouble seeing Let's sort of scroll over instantiate animal prefabs square brackets zero comma what we're doing where we're doing it so we're putting it in a new XYZ position and how we're rotating it, which we're just saying the rotation that's currently on it is what we're going to use. And I need to hit Command S to save. Right, let me run back. I feel like I'm getting some weird errors uh, with my Visual Studio, but it, it should be working. So let me go click on my go to my scripts folder. I just want to look and see if it's saving. Let's. Oh, I'm still locked in my inspector, so I can't see. So I'm just going to click here. Yeah, it looks like it saved my script. So Spawn Manager has it. So I should be able to press the S key and it should make my cow. Oh, see it's making cows. Great. Awesome. Now, that's okay. Um, I wanna make this, a, let's make it so we can change that in the inspector. So I'm going to go back to my script and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Let's let's actually take the number. Let's make a public very uh, public variable here. So I'm going to go to line seven for me and press return. I'm going to do public whole number because the array is using whole numbers zero one two. In fact, if I try to use a float here, it would not work at all. It would break the the script. So I'm going to use a public int, and we're going to call this animal index. Yeah, I'll just call it animal index. So each animal has its own index number. Make sure I finish that with a semicolon. Lowercase a, uppercase i, they're together. And 
Instead, I'm going to use as a public number, I'm going to replace this zero here with animal index. Make sure you replace it with animal index, not animal prefabs. So I went inside the array, and we're just going to pull a number in the inspector. We're going to choose a number in the inspector for it to make. I'm going to scoot on over because I know right here I also had a zero for its rotation, and we're going to say the same thing animal index. I'm going to save that, go back into Unity, and right here I have an animal index right now of zero. So I'm going to press play. And so it should make my element zero, my cow, because it's index number is zero. Now if I change this to a one, it should make, click back on my game, you have to make sure you click here. Uh, I'm gonna, now it should make my element one, which is the horse. Let me change this to a two, click back on my game and hit S, and now I have a bunch of meese. I think that's the plural, I don't know. Um, and it's good to see that they are destroying the way they're meant to. Now if I went over here and put the number three, you'll look right down here, you're gonna see that I'm going to get a out of range exception. Index was outside the bounds of the array. So there is no number three. Um, because we only have three elements and it starts at zero. So we, that doesn't work. So great, that looks good. Now that's fine, uh, but we don't want to have to go into the inspector. I mean, you can't do that while your player is playing the game, right? They can't. You can't go into the inspector and change it. So we want this to be handled by itself inside of the script. So instead, we're going to create a uh, a random range. We're going to say choose a number randomly from this index. So either zero, one or two, and then put that into the game. Now this is where things are gonna get a little weird. Normally, we put our variables at the very top. This is because in our scripts, we've been using them throughout the script, uh, but we don't always have to do that. So I wanna point out that we can actually put some variables and hold them inside of parts of our script so that other parts don't have to see it. Not that this is absolutely necessary for this game, but I just want to point out a little bit of what you can do with a variable. So I'm going to take this int animal index, and I'm just going to go here into my get key code. So whenever I press uh, S, so for me it's line 20. I have that open bracket. I'm going to press return so I can go on to on the top, and I'm going to say int space animal index spell it the same now it looks a little weird because the the game already understands that like wait there's already a variable called that why are you doing this so i'm going to delete the one that's up here gone i can delete and move this up just a little bit for my sake okay so, so this holds an animal index but we haven't set it to anything so i'm going to now set it to a random range. So random, choose a random number within a range. Random dot range, capital R's, two capital R's. Let me zoom in just a little bit. So when you do a random range, you have to tell it what the minimum is and what the maximum is. So the minimum number in our range is going to be zero. And I'll put a comma. And then the next number is going to be what the maximum is. Now you would think that the, we could we would just put in the number two, and, and, and it probably could, would be fine. But the better way of doing this is we're going to take our animal prefabs dot length. and then put a semicolon at the end. And now what that is doing is taking our list of objects and saying there's zero, one, two, and it's finding that number. And it's automatically doing it itself instead of us having to hard code that in. Because if we ever wanna add more animals into our array, all we would have to do 
is back in Unity. I haven't saved yet, but I will go do that. If we added another prefab, I could put another one in easily, go to my spawn manager, just drag it up here to this name. It would add the size and make it four, and it'll pull it in automatically. And I wouldn't have to come back into this code and hard script this number. So we, we're okay with zeros. And honestly, I'm not really cool with this 20 being here, but for what we're doing, uh, we'll be okay for now. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm you with every little detail at this point. But animalprefabs.length is totally fine. So I'm going to hit save. Make sure I save because I haven't done that yet. Go back into Unity. By the way, if you ever get a, 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 an error down here and you can't get rid of it, you might have a tab called Console. Uh, or you can go up to the window. At the very top it says Window above the screen. You can't see it because I'm not recording that part of my screen. And get your open up your console window. Go to console and you can hit clear. That's where all your errors sit. And you can kind of clear them out that way. So now let's see. If I press play, I should be able to hit the S key. And I will get a random assortment of animals. So horse, cow. Yep, I'm getting random animals. I want to hit. All right. Pretty cool. But still... Not really a good game. Let's make it so that our animals spawn at random positions across the top of our screen. So we're going to go back into our uh, sorry spawn manager script. Now, the part of our script right now that's currently determining where our um, animals are spawning. So it's this line here, line 20, is instantiate and it's saying take an, a number, a random number from zero to the length of the list and taking that object, putting it into the world and then putting it here. This is this bit right here is what, where it's telling it where it should be. So this is what we're going to have to change. And of course this is our rotation. When we instantiate we always have to have a rotation. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to create a range uh, from the left to the right. So just like we did with our players constraints, uh, constraints, when we said no more than negative 14 on the left and no more than positive 14 moving left and right, we want to do the same thing with our uh, creatures. We want to say I want you to be able to spawn from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen. So I'm going to go up here into my variables. At the very top, we're going to hold it up here. And I am going to create a private, let's do private, float. Let's do a float. Um, we, could do, we could have done int. I just feel like using float right now. And we'll call it spawn, capital R range. And this is for our x axis from left to right. And right now, the furthest over, I'm going to clip over to Unity just so you can see this. The furthest over I would want it to spawn is negative 14, and the most I would want it to spawn to be 14. So for now, I'm just going to put equals 14, put a semicolon. And we're going to basically tell it in the code, look from, four, from positive 14 to negative 14. And even though this isn't like super relevant, let's we, we know that 20 was a good number for our Z and we don't like having numbers down here. Let's go ahead and put it up here at the very top. So private float. Remember that could be an int if you want it to. It is a whole number. And we're setting it private because we'll never have to change this. And I'm going to say spawn POS um, is often shorthand for position. Also it's shorthand for a turn of phrase that I don't want to use, but spawn POS position on the Z equals, and then we said 20. So this is how far up on above the screen we want to be. So we're just going to go right above the screen. All right. Uh, now we have these holding hard numbers up here, but let's go ahead and put in another variable down here that will contain that new vector three. So where each every time it spawns, we're going to call for this vector three. So I'm going to go to inline 21, 
press return and vector sorry my hands got caught there vector 3 and we'll call it spawn position so where our creature will be spawned its XYZ coordinates so let's set it as a new vector 3 we need to tell it so this is just saying the type it is in its, in its variable name but now we actually have to tell it that yeah we are using the XYZ alright our X is going to be random we want it to be random so a range so a random number on the X, posi X position and we need to open up we need to tell it from what from what's the minimum it could be so our minimum is negative 14 so that's the same thing as negative spawn range, range X so negative 14 comma all the way to or what's our maximum well spawn range X a positive 14 so negative 14 to positive 14 so that's our X number it can be okay go in between these parentheses I'm gonna hit a comma so I need to tell it it's Y and we don't want the Y to be anything we just want it to be in the same position it was before so I'm gonna hit zero I'm gonna hit a comma and then finally we want we have a value for 20 which is a variable for 20 which is spawn position Z so uh, down here after my zero I'm going to say spawn position Z and at the end of this line make sure you put a semicolon so I know that was a lot uh, but we're not finished we got to plug that number into our actual code we're just these are just variables they're not doing anything they're just holding this information they're choosing a random number or setting up a random uh, XYZ position uh, this line of code, line 22, is so useful. So useful in so many games. Um, vector 3, spawn position, is equal to a new vector 3. And the x is a random number between negative 14 and positive 14. It's going to be set to 0 on y, and it's going to be set to 20 on the z. So the last thing we should do is just replace this segment, for me, line 23, where it says new vector 3. Uh, 0, 0, 20. I'm going to delete that and I can just now put this variable name spawn POS. Make sure you put POS, not POS Z. Don't make that mistake. And that looks pretty good. I think we're set on that. So I'm going to zoom back out. And so your script, roughly, I know it's hard to see probably right now, but that's what it should be looking like. For your spawn manager. So I'm going to save, go back in, press play, hit S, and you'll see that it will randomly create animals across the screen. Pretty good. That, that feels pretty good. Um, You know, I think, you know, it's kind of cool to play with this camera here in the scene view while you're playing, by the way, and just get a sense of what the game looks like in different views. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, what we'll do for our game is on your main camera, let's take your camera, click on it, and change its, its projection from perspective to orthographic. And that should... Uh, if I, I can show you what that looks like. So orthographic projects it straight down, like almost isometric, um, opposed to perspective, which if you can see these rays, it's just like your normal eyes, kind of like the further away something is, the more you can see, it kind of broadens out. Uh, with orthographic, it is a hard and fast, straight down, like you're wearing blinders on your eyes. And that feels a little bit better for this type of game. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, we're going to probably get rid of those animals that are already in the game at some point. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so that is it for this video. Um, I will, hopefully in class, I will, we'll make sure we cover some really important words and 
uh, like phrases I introduced a lot, but hopefully this is not overbearing. And I can't wait. Next time we're going to be making it so that when we shoot pizza uh, and we hit our animals, it will feed them, quote unquote, destroy them. <laughs>